Last time on Rob and Shuri, Rob gets stuck up in Washington for about three days waiting for paperwork to process on the boat. In this episode, Rob goes up to take delivery of the trailer only to find he needs to kill time so he takes Cinder to the beach. Later, Rob prevails, gets delivery of the boat, and drives to Oregon late at night. Well, hello, this is day 10. We've gone 2,244 miles since Arizona. And today is the big day. We're uh, picking up the trailer and then loading it, the boat onto that trailer. And Lord knows what happens after that. <laughs> I think we have a dinghy we gotta put in the back and then uh, uh, load a motor. So that's what we got going on today. So stay tuned. So when Rob arrived at the trailer dealer, of course the parts weren't in yet and the trailer was not ready to go. So it was already 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so Rob and Cinder decided to go for a ride to the beach and go play in the water a while and kill time till they get the phone call that the trailer is actually ready, which doesn't actually happen till dinner time. What you doing? Get a chance to be in the beach. So of course, the trailer's not ready. I'm waiting for some parts. So the guy who owns Tough Trailer said there was a good place here on the beach. So I could let Cinder go play, and so that's what we're doing. So it is a nice little hideaway, and I can take her off the leash, and nobody seems to care. Nobody around here. So anyway, uh, I'll get back with you when I get this trailer, and then load the boat, and then transport. Like a nice day, but beautiful place. I'll show you around here a little bit. And Cinder's happy. Have a good time? Come here. You're gonna be stinky. So Tough Trailers finally gave us a call around dinner time that the parts were in and the trailer was ready. And so when we got there, we had the opportunity to get a tour of his production of trailers. So this is where we build all of our aluminum trailers. Okay. Right in this shop right over here. Wow. Very nice. So everything starts in this shop. So aluminum is less corrosive, is that correct? Uh, in terms of galvanized versus aluminum, yeah. they're both the equivalent. Really? Yeah, oh. so the galvanized steel isn't going to lock on you unless you're in extreme salty conditions. Yeah. And the aluminum, it'll oxidize. But what you can do to deal with oxidization is there's a product called Shark Hide. Uh -huh. And Shark Hide is just basically you put it on the aluminum I-beam and it seals it. Sweet. And you do it two or three times a year depending on the amount of usage. Oh, okay. So is your this building over here, this is our fabrication shop. So that's quite a place he's got here, guys. You can see um, this trailer was in the shop earlier when we were here. Yeah. So this one's designed with 13,000 pounds of carrying capacity and it's going to be for a 36 foot boat wow. and it's being prepped to go out for hot dip galvanizing. Oh, okay. So one thing about us is when we galvanize the trailer, we don't galvanize it in parts, we galvanize it as one completely welded frame. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, so no, nothing's bolted in. Amazing. So this makes it, makes it very rich. And this is your main shop for... This is the main fabrication shop. So this is where all your winch posts, is, posts are built, your uh, steel frame trailers, galvanized trailers. You can see centers up there. And just all our components we build in here. And then over here, this is our assembly shop. We run four tens Monday through Thursday. Oh, so nice. you're catching us at the end of our week. <laughs> and right. everything's just kind of getting pushed out, cleaned out. So when you look yeah. at our yard, you notice there's not a lot of trailers in our yard right now. Yeah. Because everything's already been pushed out for the week. Gotcha. So in this shop here, we can fit five trailers in the outside base and three trailers on the inside. Holy cow. So you guys really specialize in some beefy trailers, don't you? That's the whole idea. Yeah. So after the tour, we went out front and there was my trailer ready to go. And so here's a quick little tour of it before we put the boat on. It's truly a beefy bugger. All right, we got this beast all hooked up. We're gonna do a little modification to uh, this jack design here. I'm just getting another pin put in, and then we're ready to go. So the sun's 
in the wrong direction here, but next is going to be able to put the damn boat on this thing. So here we go. It was already dinner time and the owner of the boat is wondering where in the heck am I with the trailer and I'm trying to get this trailer done so then I have to drive another 10 miles to Birch Bay to meet the owner of the boat so we can start getting it on the trailer. But I want to give credit to the owner Don who was very patient with all the things that I was going through but I think he was just happy to get rid of his boat. So we finally get this thing lifted up and I realize I am pulling about 10 tons of boat up. And we get it to the top of the ramp and this is where you pull the plug out in the back and drain out any extra water. So that's what we're doing. We're draining the water out and uh, letting it out and and uh, just want to try to keep saying to myself, let's not forget to put that plug back in. So we get this thing all set up and we take it over to the rinse off area. So here we take off all the different pieces of grass and uh, uh, gunk and stuff that are on the trailer so we don't contaminate other places that we take the boat. And the other thing this thing has is a hose system to every tire that will uh, flush fresh water into all the axles. So that's where you see the hose there off to the left is actually uh, rinsing off my axles. And of course I'm under here right now making sure that I put the plug back in the boat. So the plug is now back in the boat. And then after that we start rinsing off the boat and getting all the uh, salt off the best we can and so we're just squirting her down and and Don's running around like a chicken with his head cut off showing me all the different things on there and he was just super nice now anyway so we're rinsing it off and there's other people waiting for us but uh, you know we, we gotta get this thing rinsed down and so I, uh, I basically go off get in the truck and I definitely haul the boat away so we can go over to Don's house so there was just a little problem we left the camera and so luckily about 10 minutes later Don drove back to this place and picked up the camera and off he went so thanks Don so the next step is we took it over to Don's house where we hooked up to his hose and flushed out the motors with fresh water so it was really nice of him to allow us to come up to his house and do this so they, oh, probably by now it's about 7 7 38 in the evening and you can see us firing up the engines and getting them all flushed out and everything went really smooth and, and Don was wonderful. We also removed all the canvases and then prior to this we also loaded the dinghy into the back of the truck and the motor in the back of the truck so we were pretty busy even after we pulled the boat out of the water. So after all that excitement I'm on the road about 8.30 at night and on my way to Central Oregon. Okay guys we got the boat loaded we uh, didn't get on the road till 8.15 at night, which is fine because we got to get through the Seattle traffic. So I'll be driving late night uh, to get this over the pass of I-90 and go in the back way to Central Oregon. Everything went pretty smooth. Uh, we had to take some canvases off and stuff. So, so far so good. Anyway, I'll tie in with you. It's going to get, start getting dark here. It's already evening and uh, I'll let you see what I see. So I started driving this beast through Birch Bay on this small road, which wasn't too bad, and gave me a chance to kind of get a feel for things, but then it started getting darker. And before you know it, I'm on the freeway, in the dark, pulling this mammoth trailer, praying that everything's okay, on my way to Yakima, Washington. So I'm just gonna drive about four hours, and it's gonna be about two o'clock before I'm done. Well, good evening. It's uh, almost oh, 2.30 in the morning. Uh, we made it to Yakima. So this is the end of the video for getting the boat, loading the boat, getting the trailer, driving, uh, I don't know, maybe 250 miles, 200 miles. And uh, I can't do anymore. So I'm at Yakima, uh, fueled up here at the Indian Reservation. I'm at the casino. I'm in their parking lot gonna try to take a snooze <laughs> and uh, as soon as uh, we wake up I'll uh, drive uh, the rest of the way to Central Oregon and then we have a day layover. Sherry's gonna fly up on Friday night so I want to thank you for watching. It's been quite a day. We have been trying to be as safe as possible. All right don't take the make sure you take the time to subscribe, like our videos, and get lots of sleep. Anyway, have a nice evening. Bye. 
Join us next episode where Rob gets two hours of sleep at the casino parking lot and drives the rest of the way to Central Oregon. There, Sherry will fly in and meet with Rob to do the rest of the journey. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.